Ashley Ignacio. Welcome to the Haskell News. We have a new student president. Here's Don Fuentes with more. On November 6, 2012, with 23 votes, six not voting, and zero opposed, executive board members and sanctioned clubs of student senate impeach Joel Hernandez. I had a chance to speak with new student senate president, Sherry Wright. It was really troubling having to go through the impeachment process um, because of a few, well, various things. For one, the whole thing of trying to empower natives and wanting to support one another and trying to keep a positive outlook on Haskell and Student Senate because there isn't very much participation when it comes to student government. So having the controversy that we did was really hard because it felt like it was, I tried to stay away from the whole aspect of people thinking that we're trying to hold somebody down or bring them down, when in fact we were just trying to show accountability and transparency. We were really wanting to focus on doing the right thing. Well, as president, I'm going to follow through with all Joel's and the former president's initiatives, like the washer and dryer initiative, trying to get free washers and dryers for the students, um, the recycling initiative, and hopefully, if I succeed in all of those, then we can make some of our own goals. Ex-Student Senate President Joel Hernandez was taken out of office due to a tweet he sent out. Native girls like it when you slap them around. If they say otherwise, they're lying. This post was made approximately one week following the Restoring the Circle, Ending Violence and Abuse on Tribal College and University Campuses initiative. He did issue an apology, but Student Senate still voted him out. Haskell held its career fair on November 8th. Here's Dallas Red with more. Many students were in attendance for the Haskell Career Fair that took place on November 8th. There were many different booths for students to visit. USA Jobs had a booth which gave students information and help with getting jobs in and with the federal government. I had talked to very many students. That's the EPA, USA, uh, or USDA, um, you know, just those uh, government agencies. So you think you may go down any of those routes? Um, I think I'm, I'm interested in maybe something in D.C., but um, we'll find out. So. Is this uh, your first time to come to one of the career fairs here at Haskell? Um, no, I've been to a career fair last year, and that was pretty big. I actually got a job when I went to the last career fair um, with Campus Crowd Systems, and basically what they do is hire um, anybody who wants to work at the Chiefs games, KU basketball games. So, I mean, it's, if you come to these things, you might luck out, so. How long has Haskell ROTC been going on? It's been, it's been going in and out for a while. Haskell's ROTCs, um, especially for the Army, really wasn't been going on until like, I came. And then I got started around at KU, because then I was the only one. And then I recruited a couple of other cadets. But once again, you know, process like selects them out and stuff. Uh, it takes a really dedicated soldier and a person of itself to be really, you know, manage their time and classes and, and everything, as well as their life, you know. This past weekend was Veterans Day, and here at Haskell, we honored our veterans. Here's Stan Lovato with more. The Haskell Veterans Day powwow took place at Coffin Complex. We honored those veterans who have served and dedicated their lives to protect our country. During the powwow, Archie Hopkins was honored for his services. I, as veteran James Jones, what Veterans Day means to him. Veterans Day. There are a lot of people that celebrate that or honor that Veterans Day in different ways. Um, and my family and my tradition um, I belong to a band of Mikusuki Indians called the Hijiti Band, and many, many years ago those uh, bands, or that particular band was uh, um, like a warrior band, and I guess there are a lot of us that were in the Hijiti Band, or that are in the Hijiti Band that 
are considered warriors, and I guess it's the ongoing tradition with me and my band. And um, I um, just re recently received something from the VFW that says that they gave me a uh, board with a cedar board with a hole in it and said that this is your um, way of seeing the past and the future and that's their way of honoring their veterans or their members of the veterans and uh, as i said i think that is just a continuing tradition in my clan and my band here at high school news on our behalf we would just like to say thank you to those veterans and those serving for our country Celebrating Veterans Day, the University of Kansas hosted a special graduation ceremony for Chester Nez. Here I am with the story. Chester Nez is the last surviving original 29 World War II Navajo code talker. He attended KU 60 years ago, but was unable to complete his degree due to the loss of his GI Bill funding. But now, Chester Nez is an official Kansas Jayhawk and he received his bachelor's degree of fine arts on November 12, 2012. The awarding of Mr. Nez's degree reflects our aspirations for our graduates to change the world. Along with his degree, Chester Nez was presented with various gifts. A cedar box from Haskell, a custom-made Pendleton blanket from the KU Native Faculty and Staff Council, another Pendleton blanket from the KU Visual Arts Department, a class ring from the KU Alumni Association, and finally, the key to the city of Lawrence. A few Haskell students had some positive comments about the historical event. I liked it a lot. Um, I was kind of emotional because, you know, this is history in the making. I got to meet him. That was really nice. I actually got to take a picture with him. We saw a lot of Haskell people here. Oh yeah, Haskell really represented. It was good. I am Ashley Ignacio with the Haskell News. Students this fall semester had a chance to enroll in a different type of science class. Here is Tierra Eagle Elk with the story. The Haskell High Powered Rocketry Club is a way to apply real world science and mathematical skills in a fun way. Student Branson Lilburn says he took the class not only for his love of math, but for the chance to build rockets. Well, like rockets are fun, I guess. I've never built a rocket before. It, it's, it'll be a cool experience getting to actually build it. The Rocketry Club uses rockets to excite students about math and science and they bring that excitement to local children through outreach programs. The Rocketry Club also tackles other challenges, including developing a social media campaign, writing scientific papers, and managing their own financing and fundraising for rocket materials. The teacher of the class, Lucas Miller, wants students to learn about more than just the process of rocket building itself. I, I want this class to be a team building experience. I want them to realize uh, how exciting uh, science and science careers can be. I uh, want them to address challenges that uh, have never been solved before and to solve them uh, as, a, as a group. Uh, and um, last but certainly not least, I'd like them to have a whole lot of fun while doing it. Absolutely has a lot to do with you know, rockets, but rockets are just sort of the medium to teach some of these science teamwork concepts that um, don't necessarily get taught in, you know, other, other classes. The next big event the Rocket Tree Club is competing in is the First Nations launch on April 27th. It is an environmentally focused rocketry competition open only to native schools. If you're interested in learning more about the High Powered Rocketry Club, you can check them out on Facebook at Haskell Rocket or go to their website at HaskellRocket.com. This is Tierra Eagle Elk from Haskell Indian Nations University. Sometimes trouble happens at school, but as a student, do you know what you're supposed to do when you get written up? 
Chelsea Burgess went to get questions answered. On Haskell Indian Nation University campus, some of the students are not informed on what to do when they are written up. Some students, like Isaac Mitchell, say they are not informed enough about the process of being written up. Um, what did you know where to go when you first got written up? Um, like the initial building where you go after you've been written up, or yeah. the building where you going to be written up at? Either or. Uh, no, not at first. I didn't. Someone had to tell me where the building was. I did not know where the building was located. Were you notified when you were in, written up? Uh, no, I was not. For my second, I guess, offense, you could say, he told me he was going to write me up, but he never notified me when he did the paperwork. Okay. Um, did you have to ask for help when you were written up? What do you mean? Did you have to ask anybody, like, where to go? Why you're written up? Yes, I did. I did have to ask. Students' right conduct, Danielle McKinney, says that the information needed to guide a student through a write-up process is written in the student handbook. Uh, we try to inform students at the beginning of the semester, but we I realize that at that time, they are just getting bombarded with information. Um, if there are other ways that we can try to get the word out, Clearly, it is listed in the Code of Conduct on page 25. Um, when we get new students coming in, we say it's up to you to know what's in this Code of Conduct. To find more information on where to go or what to do when you get written up, you can go to the student handbook. This is Chelsea Bridges from Haskell News. Haskell University had a presidential voting where students were able to register in the state of Kansas in less than 10 minutes to vote for their selective ballots. Many students showed up and local Lawrence residents were here also. Haskell reporter Rulin Ray Mariano was able to interview Eugene Gallego, one of the many students that had a chance to register, and this is what he had to say. No hassle really. I mean, I guess this was the first time that Haskell did voting from what I hear, and uh, it was actually the first time I actually voted because I'm not a big fan of Romney at all. The state of Kansas majority voted for Romney, but it was President Barack Obama who won a second term. Haskell's men's cross country took second in this year's conference meet hosted at Haskell. Here's Lucretia Lovato with the results. Haskell men's cross country team took second this year in conference. York overall total score 41, Haskell 48. Freshman Chad Upshaw came in fifth, which qualified him to run in nationals. November 17th in Vancouver, Washington. Senior Thomas Dooney came in seventh. Junior Josh Munson took tenth. Freshman Dominic at City in fifteenth. Senior Angelo James came in sixteenth. Senior Bryn Fragua came in twenty-sixth. Sophomore Gabe Goodchild came in thirty-first. The women's cross country made history by winning their first conference meet. Here is Lucretia with more of the story. Not only was winning the conference meet a first for women's cross country, but it was also the first time since Haskell moved to the NAIA four-year level that any cross country team has qualified for nationals. Also only the second sport at Haskell, other than women's basketball, to advance to nationals. Taking first for the second time in a row was Talisa Butter. Following her was her following teammates. Freshman Tiara Littlehead took ninth place. Sophomore Samantha Taylor took 10th. Freshman Angelina Bidani took 11th. Junior Shauna Woody took 12th. Junior Delfina Yazi came in 24th. Sophomore Ashley Wormy took 28th. Sophomore Maria Cato took 40th. And Sophomore Leslie Wasetta took 52nd. Haskell will be running in nationals November 17th in Vancouver, Washington. Haskell beat second place York College by only one point. Haskell 43, York 44. I'm Ashley, and thank you for watching the Haskell News.